Um, I wanted just to first um, talk about the different series that are part of the show. Um, there's about three different bodies of work that are part of Somos Millones, and um, some of it is older than others, and some of it is a very new kind of venture into new ideas and materials and installations. So can you just tell us the, the three different series and kind of um, how the process of putting them together for this, this particular show? Um, well, uh, welcome and thank you for being here um, in a great evening. Um, so we have uh, here three, as she said, mentioned, three bodies of work. Um, one of them, which are the portraits that you see, it's called Neither Here Nor There. Um, it's a series of portraits that photograph first, second, and third generation BIPOC American immigrants. And then we have America Utopica, which is uh, the piece that you see here from America, the piece, and that piece over there with the lighting that's called uh, Somos Misiones. And then we have this new piece that's going to be part of my new work. Um, and these three pieces, the three books of work come together um, because I was thinking about, you know, in America Utopica, I'm speaking about race, um, I'm speaking about, you know, how um, the demographics of the, the U.S. are changing and what does it really mean. And then we have the portraits of the people who, you know, live in America, who are the immigrants, who are part of the of the population that is changing the demographics. Um, and then we have this new body of work, which is, um, is, is a little bit more personal, it's big about my indigenous identity, how I found, you know, I, I learned recently that I am of indigenous descent, so I find myself in a journey of reparation and trying to reclaim a part of my identity that I didn't have access to for different reasons, and so this is that it's called, this piece is called Rite of Passage. Um, and this is for what's coming next. Thank you. Um, and we've talked before about when you began to discover and um, learn about indigenous identity as um, the moment in which you immigrated to the United States. So you were already in this process of displacement and migration, and then of course having to think about that historical um, uh, frameworks for how that's happened both in your home country and of course in the United States. So I want to also talk about America Utopica um, in that context of really thinking much more broadly about this idea of America. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, we use this term here in the United States to refer to the US, but of course we're talking about an incredible two-continent landmass um, that you have been very thoughtful about in both your indigenous identity and of course your belonging and placement in that. So in creating this particular work um, with the NEON, there was a participatory component. Um, can you just talk about this work as it functions in um, public art, as well as your relationship to the people involved, and just what you were thinking when you were creating it? Yes. So when, when I, so this piece marks a shift in my, in my practice, like I've been doing uh, portraits of people, and at the time that I did it was when we were in confinement because of COVID. I couldn't get in the same room with people to keep photographs. I still wanted to keep working. I still wanted to keep producing work. And I think there was a set of, of things you know, that came together, like the timing. There was also happening uh, the Black Lives Matter protests for George Floyd were happening. And also ideas that I had before, and, but I never materialized because I didn't because it wasn't the right time or because, you know, um, just I didn't find a way to express uh, the ideas. And of course, timing has a lot to do. And so I, I've always been thinking about, you know, your, your rights because 
something that I found very um, strange that was that when you migrate to the United States, the first thing that you have to do is fill the immigration form, and they ask you for your race. And in those categories that they have, I don't fit any of those. Like I'm not white, uh, but neither I am any of the others. And so it always was so confusing for me, and I had to put white and maybe Latino, and I knew it wasn't correct. So this always stick on my mind, and, and you know, also the, the, the color of your skin, how it dictates a lot of things in, in the world, not only here in the US, but in the world. Uh, some spoke, speak more about it, like the US, some like Latin America don't. Um, but I decided to open a call on, on social media. Uh, and people from all over the US were submitting a photo of their skin tone with their name um, and other data that I collected. And then um, while doing research, I found out that um, by 2043, um, the US demographics are changing. So they said that it's going to be like a 60, 40, like all non-white groups combined are going to surpass white population in the US. And so thinking about this information, I decided to do a demographic portrait of the US with every, with every person who, you know, who's a leader of the skin tone who lives in the US. And if you look closely, you're going to see that they have a the name imprinted in each square. And to me, it was very important, you know, thinking about <clears throat> uh, that each of these persons hold an equal space. They are all next to each other. Um, and, and thinking also, you know, about, well, this is how it's going to look. This is the future of the United States. But, what's actually the space that we are going to have. So it's also a question, it's a message of hope, but it's a question as well. And I'm thinking about, you know, what she was referring to. Um, the series is called, it's called America Utopica, which is in Spanish. This doesn't translate the same, it's not Utopia America. And, and there is a reason why, it's because um, America in Spanish means the whole continent, you know, and, and I was thinking about that, um, and, and that's why you see the word America, but on top of that, you can see the U.S. of the United States of America. Yeah, for sure, and I think your use of English in this um, particular piece, contrast to your use of Spanish, for me, really brings up this kind of what is violent at times about translation, particularly in the use of America, to say, um, you know, America, uh, utopia, or utopic America, is to say something completely different than America Utopia, right? We're talking about um, extending this idea of America to a very colonial mentality in which um, this one word is meant to invoke this particular place versus this very multifaceted and very, very, um, just entire uh, hemisphere of the world. So can you tell us a little bit about your uses of Spanish and English in your text and kind of how that contrasts with your ideas of, of images or what you're trying to kind of um, show in those moments? Yes. Well, I started thinking that I do have a voice, you know, that my, my art is reaching people in, you know, I had to do the effort to learn English, and, and English seemed to be, you know, the language you need to know, and everyone expects you to speak English when people travel and all that, and I wanted to start using Spanish because, you know, I don't want to miss myself, like, I'm, I don't want to forget about um, who I am, you know, to fit in in this society, which is the United States, and so it was important for me, you know, to 
bring that and people will say, well, of course my name, my last name is very um, Latin American name, but um, it is important, it was important for me to, to do that. And, you know, that um, translates to the movement of the images as well, you know, like we were, you were asking about the images and, you know, um, um, these translations, you know, this, um, how images translate uh, and, and thinking about, you know, all these things about perspective, uh, different angles, uh, separation, displacement, and all that, for me to, to, you know, work the images that way. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, the images are very striking. I think that um, in many ways, you have really extended this practice of um, construction through deconstruction, through assembling, through reassembling. And I think, um, you know, it really invokes this idea of the multiplicities of identities. But I want to also ask you about your relationships to the people in a lot of these images. Um, it's not uncommon if we're in a place together that, you know, they'll say, oh, you know, <laughs> in your series. Or um, at the opening, of course, we see these familiar faces. So. Can you tell us about how you choose to photograph who you're photographing and kind of your process in which you are then transferring it to these um, these images we're seeing in the gallery? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, more, all the people who we see here, we see here is from Houston. And they are acquaintances of mine that I knew a little bit about their personal history and you know a little bit about uh, if they were first, they could have third generation American immigrants. And one, I'm living here, and then two, Houston is one of the most uh, diverse cities in all of the US. And I wanted to, you know, portray um, the spaces um, and some. Sometimes, you know, some of them you see that they are taking up space. And I was thinking about um, about the history of portraiture and, and who photographed who and how. Uh, and I made this question to myself, myself, uh, for who, by whom. And in thinking about that, I wanted to, you know, be the person who belongs to that same group who photographed them, but photographed them in a very um, kind of celebrating them, uh, giving them the space, taking up the space, and hopefully, you know, occupying the spaces that were not meant for them, that initially were not thought for them. And so, in, in regards to making the work, I, I'm always thinking about these different ideas of, you know, conceptually. I, I, I think of them as a holistic um, group of portraits that, and thinking about, you know, how this idea of displacement, um, separation, uh, information that is missing uh, from our history or from our ancestors, or information that, you know, we don't have access to. Um, and thinking, you know, about these gaps and all that. But at the same time, you know, you see many, like, some of them have gaps in there. And I'm thinking about um, that those blank spaces could be a space for us to tell the story we want to tell. So to fill in the blanks. Um, so it has this duality of meaning. Uh, at the same time. Yeah. And I think with, with the way you are um, choosing who to photograph and really trying to focus on immigrants or people who um, have experienced these forms of displacement and questions of belonging, it really enters into this visual economy of how immigrants or, or people who are migrating from place to place are often depicted within the, uh, the media or within kind of what is trying to be shaped around that narrative. And so we have this idea of the migrant image, of images that capture people in movement or stuck in places of staticness or, mobility, or immobility that often circulate. And 
for me, what your work does is really extend this idea of movement beyond who is who is moving or what is kind of being um, uh, re uh, relocated or um, out of place and, and kind of put in, back into place, but also the actual image itself is, is moving and, and really invokes this plasticity um, in how you're, you're constructing this multivariate identities on layered on top of each other. Can you talk a little bit about kind of the colors or the patterns and um, how you begin to think about your relationship to the, the very material of the image itself as you're building these portraits? Um, when uh, my, my career starts with phot photography, like just plain photography, and then I jump into collages, and then I jump into doing this more sculptural work. And I was thinking about, you know, really breaking free from the form that is two-dimensional, the, the photography. And I was thinking about you know the concept of of pushing against something that should be in made in a way. Um, and so I started adding different materials like wood, paint, resin uh, to create this movement, to create this more sculptural work. And in regards to the uh, patterns and all that. I, it's very um, intuitively, um, I do it very, very intuitively. Um, I first, of course, I have to decide how I'm going to cut the image, how I'm going to slice it and that. But once I have all the pieces together, sometimes, and well, actually most of the time, I do have to let the piece um, do what the piece wants because sometimes I have ideas and those ideas don't work. So it's kind of like a tension between me and the piece to to sing to 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 make it right. And I'm also you know thinking as I mentioned before the gaps, the, the, all of that. But for example, in some of the pieces, um, like this one or another one, it's not here, but it's also part of the of the uh, series. These these people are from indigenous descent, and so I was thinking about the flag from uh, all Latin American indigenous groups. It's, it's like squares like these and goes and changes in color depending on the group. But I was thinking about that and how you know I use it in, in these cases uh, when I'm speaking about. Uh, people who are from, you know, the domination system. Um, I think legibility comes up a lot in many of the different types of work here. So, how did you begin incorporating this particular material? Um, so, in the Mapuche culture, uh, stones um, have, it, it, it is believed that the stone has been alive before and they have energy, they possess energy. And once you find one that you that you like, you take care of it, you keep it with you, and you take care of it. And so I was thinking about that, and but I was also thinking, you know, about extractivism. You know, what happened with this with these places that uh, their resources are being exploited, and so in. in when I decided on, on using the stone, I specifically decided on choosing um, stones that are from Mexico, from Baja, Mexico, that have come to the US and you can go to the store and buy them. And so for me, the question was, who is profiting from what? And, and how does it get here, you know? And, and, and a lot of questions that, you know, are related to that. But coming back to the meaning of the stones, you can you will see that there are a few pieces that are pink, red, um, and those are the ones from all of the, the the stones that I had that resonated with me, and so I decided to mark them. Um, and you also will see at the corners of each um, uh, each corner 
that there is a pile of rocks. And this is pretty common in, in Latin America, especially in the south where I've seen it, in Peru, in Argentina, Bolivia. And it's a gift to Earth. Uh, indigenous people do it to, you know, give it as a gift to the Earth and protect them in their trip. And then this was, um, was took by the tourists. And so now when you go in the mountains, you're going to see it everywhere, um, all over. Yeah, and the people do it. Um, and it's not only, uh, I, I know this has been used for um, different other cultures, but that's the meaning that has in Argentina, especially in the north of Argentina, north uh, east. Um, and then, you know, I'm thinking also about blue. Um, what does it represent to me? So using this natural material, using being connected with the spirituality, and being connected with the nature, and learning about that. And so I thought that blue would be um, a, a color that represents nature for me, but also spirituality. Um, and then we have the grace, of course, um, for me, the grace, if you ever seen any indigenous person from Latin America, the, the two grace is something that's very uh, common among all of them. Um, and I was thinking, loosely thinking about um, and a kind of ceremony they have when you are a child, as a girl, and, and you are becoming a woman, they, they circle around you, um, all women, and they perfect, like they pierce your ears. Um, they, the Mapuche people are known for um, doing jewelry in silver. They are very well known for that. They are masters of that. And so um, that's when we become these little pieces of felt that are called cholol, and, and they are called cholol by them. Um, so yeah, I was thinking about all these elements, you know, from, from the culture and and how do I think about that and how you know would it be for me to go through this and you know be in contact and, and learn and, and be part like a, a, like an initiation, right? In in this journey of reclaiming a part of my identity. Thank you. Um, so when you decided to, you know, you've incorporated text um, throughout m m a lot of this work, um, particularly in America, go figure. How did you decide to begin thinking through um, using the stones to, um, to write this message, particularly when you've used neon, you've used this lights and, and glitter um, in past work, and then when you talk about the vibrancy and the energy located in these stones, um, how do you translate that into into the text or into this particular work? So this um, this work that is on the wall means um, we are all made from the same clay, and I was thinking about clay, you know, thinking about literally clay, and so I wanted to do something that was made with my hands, you know, that has that that the refers to what the text is saying. And so I started to to do them. Some of them are clay, so though some of them are made from clay, and some of them are actual stones. Mm -hmm. And so while I was doing this, I thought, OK, but why are you actually making the shape of a stone with clay? Isn't that like very kind of artificial process? Mm -hmm. And so I started thinking, you know, well, I should actually use stones. I should, to you know, to refer to the meaning, to actually have like a, um, an actual meaning for, for me, right? And so that's when I decided to thinking, you know, to connect the bodies of work and thinking about, you know, connecting the works, even if different, different bodies of work. It's my art practice, and, and, I, and I thought that it needed to feel connected to me to make sense. Mm -hmm. Um, my last question before we open it up is um, where do you imagine this work is heading next and, and kind of extending 
this particular body of work? What do I wish? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Maybe a museum, yeah. So I when one when I did the first portrait that was very monumental side, which was kind of like this uh, same side, different person with an indigenous descent, I thought I'm making this work to be monumental, to occupy a space, you know, uh, to be strong in, in a space that wasn't designed for them, for me, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and so I, want, I want this to be in a museum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in your most recent work, um, or, you know, with Rites of Passage, um, is there kind of the next phase or kind of ways of wanting to approach um, what what could become from that particular series? Yes, I I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do it, but as you know, when you're navigating these new um, kind of territories, you don't know if you're gonna be accepted, right? You, to belong, you have to be accepted in that group. And, and people were in the same, um, in the same, like in the same, like same, being in the same, you know, going through the same thing, and it was exciting. And I wanted to do those portraits along with keeping an extended piece, um, but don't know how it's gonna go. Yes, yes. So we'll all stay tuned. I'm <laughs> sure we're all really looking forward to seeing how that develops. Um, are there any questions from the audience? So I think it's really brilliant what you have done. Um, it's really pushing, I think, these ideas. It's creating a space that didn't exist before. Um, it's pretty brilliant. Um, so I'm really excited to see all the ways you're sort of working. And I don't think you're not stuck sort of in that sort of like, I'm a photographer, and I will make a print and put it in a frame. You're really sort of breaking new ground. And it's really wonderful, all of your explorations. You said something really wonderful too, which I think applies to that, that you're stuck in immobility, I think, when you do sort of stay in that box. Mm -hmm. And I really love that frame in terms of also thinking of my work and migration and movement. Sure. So I really, that language is perfect. Yeah, I think there's a tendency for images to um, really adhere to veracity and to be a, um, an un- uh, just a window into what we're seeing and I think that you pull that apart but also back you know pull us back into understanding that these are constructed that there's a history of how um, subjects are rendered as fixed categorized um, people races ethnicities you know um, and in attempts to break away from that you've, you've literally <laughs> taken the images apart in order to put it back together and there's something really remarkable about that
something that I have coming up is uh, Sonia Michael. Um, it's one of the biggest art fair in Latin America. So I'm going to be showing there um, some of these new works and other works from the construction stuff. So it's, it's very exciting. Uh, That's great. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you.